Welcome back everybody to our studies in public law. In this video we're going to carry on talking about the grounds for judicial review as well as specifically making reference to the concept of irrationality and the relationship between this and human rights law and human rights legislation and uh, basic human rights principles in the Human Rights Act specifically. So we're continuing examining, uh, examining sorry, the nature of irrationality and, and Wensbury unreasonableness as one of the major grounds for judicial reviews. Uh, and this lesson specifically will explore the extent to which we can say irrationality is able to afford the adequate amount of protection to those who are claiming judicial review in cases that relate to human rights. So we're essentially going to recap the concept of irrationality, which is, of course, something of a topic from the last video. But then we're going to make application to this um, basic principle and talk about it in relation to the concept of human rights ba uh, principles. So according to Lord Diplock, irrationality is simply a different way of writing unreasonable, the concept of unreasonableness. Now, unreasonableness may be determined either if a decision is improper or if it is Wensbury unreasonable. And we have known this from the case from 1948 of the Associated Provincial Picture Houses Limited versus the Wensbury Corporation. This is the uh, case which involved the idea of Sunday entertainment at a cinema where we see uh, the banning of people under a certain age and the question of whether or not that would represent Wensbury unreasonableness. So. It was considered that something is to be uh, viewed as Wensbury unreasonable if no reasonable person in that situation could ever make that decision. Now, that's a little bit of a higher statement than you might think, um, or a higher standard than you might think, because you might just be thinking, well, obviously, something is unreasonable if a reasonable person wouldn't do it. But it's a bit more than that. It's not that a reasonable person wouldn't do it. It is more specifically that a reasonable person could never do that. It would be impossible for a reasonable person to make a decision if it is Wensbury unreasonable. That is the point of that. So that is the idea that you would that you would um, that you would ascribe to the concept of Wensbury unreasonableness. However, when it comes to administrative decisions which are made in the context of human rights, uh, the Human Rights Act specifically, there will be the requirement of a higher standard other than that of simply Wensbury unreasonableness. And we can see this in the case law, and we can see this in some of the basic principles. Um, one such example is obviously the case of Crown versus the Ministry of Defence from 1996. So this case illustrates uh, an interesting point in relation to Wensbury and reasonableness as it pertains to human rights. Now, there are basically two elements that we have to think about here. We have to think about the way in which this case, uh, the Smith case, actually was uh, ascribed in English law, the domestic system, and then how this principle then gets dealt with in the European Court on Human Rights in, in a case where, which applies the ECHR. The case concerned a number of military personnel who were known to be homosexuals and or engaging in what was known at the time or considered at the time as, quote, homosexual activities. Now, this is seemingly just a, 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 a non-controversial way of saying uh, basically uh, sexual activities um, uh, of a homosexual nature. So... A total of four military personnel would be dismissed on the ground that they were known to be homosexuals or engaging in homosexual activities, at which point they challenged this decision. And they challenged this decision in a judicial review case. And they challenged it reasonably on the grounds of the decision violating their rights to private and family life, which is the, their Article 8 rights under the European Convention on Human Rights. They also made the argument in addition to this that uh, they, they, uh, the government violated the e EU Equal Treatment Directive in relation to the dismissal as well. So they made sort of two tracks, one in relation to EU law, one in relation to the law on the European Convention on Human Rights. 
Now, the Court of Appeal held that it was in fact reasonable to dismiss them on the grounds that they were homosexuals. They noted that a higher standard ought to be applied in circumstances where a challenge is made on the grounds of reasonableness when it concerns human rights infringers. So when it comes to human rights infringers, it should, it should be a higher standard than that of simply Wensbury and reasonableness. Since this involves an infringement or an alleged infringement of the human rights, a substantial justification would have to be required to show that it was not irrational. The courts held that, essentially, to suggest a policy is irrational when it is supported by both Houses of Parliament and was considered at the time to be within the reasonable limits uh, of this support, it would not therefore be proper to use judicial action in this circumstance, especially as it also retain, pertains to human rights. So that is why they concluded, therefore, that the, that the decision was considered to be at least reasonable um, as a, uh, under the judicial review law that we had. So simply put, when it comes to these kinds of circumstances, irrationality is a particularly high threshold to meet. But we then also get an application of this case to the European Convention on Human Rights, the European Court on Human Rights. The case of Smith and Grady versus the United Kingdom in 1999 is the exact same um, set of factual circumstances, but it is, of course, just an appeal um, from the previous case of the Court of Appeal all the way up to the ECTHR. Now. Rather than suggesting that there was no incompatibility between uh, in relation to their into their their human rights, the ECTHR in fact concluded the opposite. They said that this, at this level, essentially, um, the policy was in fact incompatible with their Article Eight rights. And so as a result of which, they also held that when it comes to human rights protections, the traditional approach of Wensbury and reasonableness is not adequate, and that instead they ought to argue for a higher standard to be placed. And at paragraph 143, they say the following. They say, quote, the threshold at which the High Court and Court of Appeal could find the Ministry of Defence policy irrational was placed so high that it effectively excluded any consideration by the domestic courts of the question of whether the interference with the applicant's rights answered a pressing social need or was proportionate to the national security. So essentially, with the with regard to the the standard being so considered so high, um, it essentially meant that the domestic courts were were useless to consider any such violations of their Article Eight rights in relation to uh, in relation to this policy being um, being challenged on the basis of judicial review, because it rendered them uh, it rendered them essentially meaningless. It excluded any consideration by the domestic courts, which is essentially uh, what the 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 ECHR um, claims in this particular case.